Thank you, Mr Speaker. In 2016, the Deputy Prime Minister told his constituents in a blog that it was his duty to, and I quote, furnish them with all the facts that are available with regards to Brexit. Today, Brexit Britain faces higher food prices, a lack of workers, a shrinking economy and a decline in living standards. Why is he happy to ignore those facts? Yeah. Yeah. The Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, we have one of the fastest growth rates in the whole of the G7 since Brexit. And we, look, we, all, we all know, and in fairness, we all know the policy of the SNP. And they said it this weekend, I quote, we need to undo Brexit. But let me tell you, if I were them, I'd start by undoing the mess they've left Scotland in and start working with the United Kingdom government and focus on the priorities of the Scottish people, not the priorities of their party. Yeah. Very black. Check the deep Mr Speaker, the, the only <laughs> thing more deluded than that defence of Brexit is the Labour Party's support of it. <laughs> now, just today, the world's fourth largest car manufacturer said that Brexit was, and again I quote, a threat to our export business and the sustainability of our UK manufacturing options. Even Nigel Farage can admit that Brexit has failed. So, Mr Speaker, why can't he? Yeah. Yeah. Prime Minister. Well, I would say to the Honourable Lady, one of the best ways of getting behind industry in this country is get behind the trade deals we are striking yeah. with many countries around the world, which they have singularly failed to oppose. And, and I see last week the SNP promised to build a new Scotland. I don't know whether she's aware, but the SNP have been in power for 13 years. Perhaps they should, they should stop their focus on independence and focus on the priorities of the Scottish people. Yeah. Esther McBee. Yeah, yeah. 